Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Chris and in this video I wanted to talk about my experience on how I passed the CPA exam. So the reason I'm doing this video right now is around this time, four years ago, um, I was starting to prepare for the CPA exam. Uh, it was my last semester of my uh, master's program and I had a full-time offer waiting in July and I know right now it's the new year 2020. One of my goals for 2016 was to pass the CPA exam before I started my full-time job in public accounting. So in this video, I'm just gonna tell you my background on myself, um, how I met the requirements for the CPA exam, how I went about preparing for the CPA exam, uh, my experience taking the actual exams, and then uh, just some overall tips on how to prepare, how to get in the right mindset, and just really talk about the experience. So this might be a long video. At any point, if there's any type of content that you want me to make about preparing for the CPA or anything like that, feel free to drop a comment down below and let me know what you want to see. Uh, I feel like as I talk about my experience uh, in this video, uh, a lot of different portions of these could probably use their own video as well. So. Uh, if you think so, drop a comment, let me know, and that'll give me some feedback on what other kinds of videos you guys want to see. So before we get started, I just wanted to provide some timestamps of all the things I'm going to cover. So they'll be somewhere, somewhere on the screen. Uh, but basically, I just want to take you through the process. So my experience in college, uh, how I met the requirements for the CPA exam. So I took the exam in the state of Texas. So how I met those requirements. Um, actually preparing for the exam, so what did that look like, how long it took me to take all the exam, types of materials that I use, all that kind of stuff. I'll leave those time stamped here in the video, in the comments, in the description, just to make it easier for you if you want to click around. So before we get started into my experiences, I thought it might be useful for you to get some background on me. So I'm a first generation college student. Um, I was the first in my family to go to college, it was a pretty big deal, and I actually started off in college as an engineering major. Um, so I went through the engineering program at my school for about a year and a half. Um, I always wanted to minor in something related to business. Um, so that's how I got into the business school. And uh, one of the requirements for a minor in, uh, in finance, which was my original minor, was accounting. And whenever I started taking that accounting class, um, I had some classmates who were accounting majors and it really kind of just seemed interesting to me. Uh, whenever I was in engineering, it got to a point where I just didn't find any anything interesting per se. Um, it was there was a lot of technical aspects, and I don't know. I feel like just for me, accounting just made more sense. Long story short, I made the switch from the engineering school to the business school to pursue accounting, and this was uh, the first semester of my sophomore year. I didn't know anything about accounting. My parents didn't know anything about accounting. Nobody I knew uh, knew anything about accounting, so really the only thing I had to go off of was uh, my school's accounting program. So I had an accounting degree plan. I knew what classes I needed to take, but as for internships or jobs or things like that, I, I had no idea. So I kind of just went with the flow. Um, we had accounting case competitions that I participated in. Those were kind of cool. I really enjoyed those and I did quite a few of those. And through those, I was able to get interviews, get internships, and I kind of just followed the process from there on out. If that's a video that you want, let me know and I can make a video just on that. So, I'm in the accounting school. There's this thing called the CPA exam that a lot of people are taking. As a sophomore, junior, I didn't really know much about it, so I didn't really pay attention to it. It wasn't until we started applying for graduation and um, started to fill out applications for all of these public accounting firms where they were asking for a CPA eligibility date, things like that, and I was like, oh, okay, I should probably look into this thing. And that's really where it got started. I talked a lot to my professors, I talked a lot to my uh, student advisors just to get more information on that. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's really all I had. I had some classmates who were also doing it, but they were just as lost as I was. Um, so just figuring out all the forms, all the information that I needed to gather, all the classes that I needed to take, I really relied heavily on my school's accounting program and they did a pretty good job at laying everything out and walking uh, us through 
the process. So I graduate with them from undergrad. I go into my school's master's program because our school offered a five-year master's program uh, where you can get your undergrad and your master's in five years. Uh, a lot of schools around the state of Texas do that and schools in other states have something similar as well. So that's what the school presented to me. It seemed pretty cool to get a master's in just one year. So I just went ahead and rolled with it. Again, not knowing uh, what any of the other options are, uh, but since this was the clearest defined option for me, that's the one I ended up taking. So my second semester, I guess my last semester of my graduate school program, that's where I started to plan for the CPA exam. Um, so by this point, I had already filled out all of my applications that uh, let the state of Texas know that I was ready to take the exam. Um, I had an internship the spring prior uh, in public accounting and the firm that I work with offered um, the study material so I ended up using Becker. Uh, so by that point, around four years ago today, I had the study material. All of my applications with the state of Texas were filled out so really what was left for me is to uh, finish that semester of school. I was still taking classes. I was also working part-time. Uh, but I just wanted to get this exam and get it out of the way. So with it being the new year in 2016 and uh, everybody setting up goals, the goal for myself was to pass all of the CPA exams before I started my full-time job. And my full-time job started in July. And without getting into the whole details, I did it. I was able to take all four exams. I was able to pass all four exams. Luckily, it only took me one time to pass all four exams. and. Funny enough, my last exam was Friday, July 9th, which was the last Friday before I started working full time. So that weekend, I everything I missed out during the spring semester, everything I missed out during the summer because I was studying, jam packed all of that into that weekend. And I mean, I remember I went out to the park, I biked, I hiked, I did all these things that I had been putting off or uh, not doing because I was studying and it felt really good. I mean, for one, I accomplished the goal that I set out for myself, but also being in public accounting now, having coworkers who are studying for the exam right now, I was just so grateful and thankful that I didn't have to study for the CPA exam while I was working full time. Let's talk about eligibility. So how did I become eligible to take these exams in Texas? So in Texas, there's a requirement that you need 150 hours in order to sit for the exam. So when I graduated undergrad, luckily some of my engineering courses had all, were able to transfer to the business school. So I ended up graduating with around 130 something hours. Uh, but like I mentioned before, uh, I went through my school's five year master's program um, and that's how I accumulated my other, my additional hours uh, to sit for the CPA exam. So was the master's program worth it? Eh, that's, that's a separate video that I, can, that I can talk about. It got me to where I needed to go as terms of being eligible to take the exam. Um, and of course, some of the courses that I took were, were relevant to the exam. Um, Looking back now, I'm three and a half years into my career, there's a lot of courses that I took that don't necessarily translate to what I'm doing at work and that that's not helpful. I mean, graduate school is expensive and you wanna be sure that you're getting everything out of graduate school. So whenever you're in a career and a lot of the classes that you paid a lot of money for don't necessarily translate, um, that can be kind of frustrating. But like I said, that's a totally separate video. Had I known of other options to become CPA eligible, I probably would have considered those as well. But I mean, not knowing anything about accounting or just this entire world of CPA eligibility, CPA exams, state boards of public accounting, I kind of just went with stuff that was already defined for me. So that's really another purpose of this video is to show you that there are other options available that I couldn't consider because I didn't really know about them. So material. I used the Becker CPA prep uh, that was provided by my firm, and I opted for the online only option. Uh, I had heard a lot of bad feedback about the in-person courses. Um, so with me still being in school, still working part-time, I like the flexibility of the online uh, only aspect. So that's what I went with, and I think it worked really well for me. Uh, I was able to study uh, whenever I could, wherever I could. So I did a little bit of traveling and being able to study uh, in other places that's not just home and not having to depend on being in a specific place at a specific time. 
uh, really helped me. Uh, if you're somebody who likes structure though and likes a schedule, I mean, I can see the in-person courses working out for you. From my experience though, I use the online only uh, and it worked. It worked out well for me. So like I mentioned, I started studying for these exams in January and went all the way to July. What I want to do now is just break down the time that I spent for each exam. So the first exam that I took was FAR. Just looking through the textbook itself, talking to other people about it, it's just a very dense subject. There's so much stuff that goes into that exam. It's essentially all of the financial accounting courses, plus some government and nonprofit stuff thrown into one exam. So if you look back into college and remember preparing for one exam that was a portion of one course during one semester and how stressful that was? Well, FAR is taking all of the exams that you took in college and putting that into one exam. So that's the first one that I wanted to tackle. I wanted to get it out of the way. Really, I just wanted to know if I failed it, I wanted to have enough time to, to take it again. Um, but that's the one I took the longest for. The rest, uh, just because of the time that I had left to reach my goal of taking all my exams before I started, I just knocked them out every five weeks. So every five weeks after FAR, I was taking BEC, study for five weeks, audit, study for five weeks, reg. And that's really what got me through uh, all of these exams and it got me to reach that goal of passing my exams before I started full time. So I started studying for FAR in January. So January, studied all of February, took my exam in March, first week of March. I felt terrible after that exam. I thought like I failed. I thought instead of studying for the next exam, let me just stay current and review this exam so that uh, when I do fail, um, I can take it again. I kind of spent that weekend just getting over that and then that next Monday, started studying for BEC. So studied BEC for five weeks, then I took that exam and then immediately the day after, started studying for audit, five weeks, took the exam, didn't look back, started studying for reg, five weeks, took the exam, that was it. I had to wait until late August, I believe. I forget when the scores came out, uh, just to get the confirmation that I had passed that exam and officially know that I was done with it. But um, yeah. First week of July was the last exam that I took and felt awesome. I was also going to school part-time, so at this point in graduate school, a lot of the classes that I was taking was, they were like once a week classes and they were usually in the evening. So I was able to fit in studying with working part-time, with going to class and doing the actual classwork. So um, that's what my CPA exam workload looked like during that semester. So yeah, it was lots of studying, lots of uh, just listening to those instructors' voices. Like, you'll notice that whenever you pass your exam, you'll go to LinkedIn or social media or something, and there's that connection between like people who are taking the exam and the instructors, even though they've never met and I've only seen their faces on like a computer screen. Um, but you do feel that connection just because you spend so much time with them. It's pretty weird, but it's also pretty cool at the end whenever you can tell them like, hey, I passed the exam because of your lectures and your instructions and things like that. So that's pretty cool. So there's some tips that I can give you to prepare for your CPA exam just to hold you more accountable. Uh, these are some of the things that I did uh, just to make sure that I could meet my goal and also hold myself accountable. Um, so I created a study plan for each exam that I was going to take. So I kind of used the ones that, uh, that the Becker material provided. Um, so in this software, I'm sure you can do it in some of the other software, but you can pick an exam date and then the software will try to uh, schedule your, your chapter so that you have enough time to cover all the content, take some practice exams and be prepared to take the actual exam. Um, so I used Becker's option for that. I modified it so that it worked better for me and for my schedule. Um, so I did it that way. So for example, FAR, um, I took two months to study for that. I think there were 10 chapters. Um, so what I did is I did uh, two chapters per week. So that's five weeks. And then the last four weeks were just review, practice exams, just going over the stuff that I didn't know that well. And then similar for the other exams, just depending on how many chapters there were, I split it so that I could cover all of the content, um, 
using so five weeks I use like two and a half to three weeks to cover the content and then two weeks to review uh, and I think breaking it out like that made it so that I wasn't stressing out due to me not having enough time to review. I think well, review is where a lot of the learning uh, comes in. That's where you know what you're good at uh, and what you need to focus more time on. So you really wanna be sure to give yourself enough time to, to do that. Uh, if I would've only had five weeks and at the fourth week I had just covered all of the content, uh, trying to review all of that stuff in one week would have been really stressful. So just be intentional about how you're spending your time with regards to covering the content and then also reviewing the content. So another tip that I recommend is figuring out what works best for you when it comes to learning. The way I went about covering all of the content, I actually went through the lectures and highlighted, just like played the video, read along, and then after that I would take uh, the multiple choice questions related to that section. So I know other people who just skipped the lecture and they went straight to the multiple choice, uh, did those, and then at that point, they were able to figure out the sections or the topics that they weren't so good at, and then they would go back and work on those sections. Um, so I tried that once, and it was just really frustrating to me because there was, there was a lot of stuff that I didn't know. Um, so rather than do that, I would just do uh, doing the lectures first and then doing the multiple choice questions. I'm more so talking about like doing this first section of chapter one doing the multiple choice for that section and kind of going that way just to make sure that you have a good enough grasp to move forward. You don't have to nail every single question, uh, but you do want to make sure that you're retaining what you're learning. So um, that's, that's one of the things that I did. Another thing that I did that helped keep me accountable, and I went ahead and scheduled my exams uh, for the dates that I estimated that I would be ready for. So whenever I started studying in January for FAR, um, I didn't wait until a few weeks away to, to schedule the exam. I set it out and I said, okay, this is how long I'm gonna take to study. This is how long I'm gonna take to review. I'm gonna take my exam on this date. And then I scheduled my exam for that date. And then that was a date that I had to be ready to take the exam. I mean, I did have the option to reschedule it if I felt like I wasn't prepared, but I felt like paying that application fee, um, booking that reservation so that I can take that exam really held me accountable. and let me know that, okay, you have to be ready by this date to take the exam. So I did that for all of my other exams too. So after I took FAR, did my study schedule for BEC, estimated what date I would be available to take my next exam, and then I scheduled it before I even started studying for it. And really, I think that helped me because it gave me something to work towards. I knew that my exam was gonna be on a certain date so that I had to do everything I could within that short period of time to be prepared for that exam. Um, so like I said, this might work for you, it might not work for you. It worked for me, so I wanted to go ahead and share it just so that you knew that it's it's an option out there that can help keep you accountable for, uh, for studying and really putting in all the work it takes to pass these exams. All right, so I'll note just one last thing. Um, I took these exams four years ago. Um, I know a lot has changed with regards to how you take the exam. Overall, preparing for the exams really doesn't change. Um, you still got to know the content. You still got to uh, study, spend time on the lecture. So the way you prepare doesn't really change, but the way you take the exam might have changed since I took it. So um, that's just one thing to keep in mind. I feel like a lot of the tips and a lot of the experiences that I share with you are things that you can still do to prepare for the exam today. Um, but just something that I also wanted to point out.